The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Ambar Garcia, Brian Broadus, Patrick Walker, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, October 4th, 2023, season 19, episode number 45. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Today, we start talking Cowboys versus 49ers. Brian will have his breakdown of the Cowboys offense versus the 49er defense. Uh, we will also get a few updates here, uh, hopefully at some point during the show, on uh, on some injuries. But we'll kind of lay the table on what that looks like uh, and then start getting you guys ready uh, for this upcoming game on Sunday night football got my crew here let's start off first uh, i know that mike mccarthy will be going will be uh, approaching uh the podium here momentarily uh but in the meantime uh no see so just kind of lay the the groundwork on what we're looking at as far as injuries for this week what should we be keeping an eye on and what do we think is the status at, as of right now okay and as you stated we'll get some real-time updates from mike mccarthy here uh via text momentarily but um Yesterday is what we have as far as the most updated. Rico Dowdle, uh, hip contusion is what it's being described as. He's expected to be limited in today's practice, today being Wednesday. Uh, Zach Martin suffered a quad injury on Sunday. He's also expected to be limited. Uh, he and Rico will both do some work with the rehab group, and then uh, the expectation is they'll you know get a little bit of participation with the team practice. Tyron Smith, knee, he's been out the past two games. Expectation is that he will be with the rehab group on Wednesday, and they'll see how he feels after that, but I expect that he'll be DMP for Wednesday. We'll see if they wrap him up for Thursday, which is a big day uh, in Cowboys Nation as far as practices are concerned. Knock on all the wood you need to when it comes to Thursday practice. Micah Parsons dealing with a knee and an ankle injury. They were kind of banged up against the Patriots. Uh, Micah told media on yesterday uh, at a somewhat of a charity event with a, a, a youth sports team that he's good to go uh, for Sunday. So as long as there are no setbacks or nothing worse since this week, Michael Parsons will be on the field, and that's massive for the Cowboys. Can't afford to not have him. Um, so M- Dowdle and Martin have a chance to play. Michael Parsons sounds like he's a full go. Uh, Tyron Smith, still wait and see. All right. Um, one other quick note I wanted to hit here real quick. Uh, actually, right before we went on the air, I started seeing some news reports of a former Cowboy that may actually be out on the street again as a free agent. Uh, both Adam Schefter at, at ESPN and Kevin Patra at NFL.com are reporting that he will be released. And I will say this before we get into the conversation, let me be real clear. These are the opinions of this group based upon being media people. And we are not representing anything from the football side or the football operations part of the building. Um, this is just opinions that we're giving based on you know our impressions of Randy Gregory and the Cowboys team. So that being said... Um, If Randy Gregory is released, as these reports are saying he will be, uh, do you think the Cowboys should be interested in possibly bringing him back? I don't see the fit now. Um, Obviously saw the fit then when they were willing to sign him in free agency before they lost him out to the Broncos. But now when you look at what Dante Fowler has come in and done and being resurgent under Dan Quinn, you want to see Sam Williams continue to ramp up. And the only way to do that is to keep getting this guy the reps. Uh, And then, of course, you know you have Mike and Demarcus Lawrence. So, you know, from a Cowboys standpoint, you would then be trying to mend fences to bring in a DE5, maybe, because who are you taking reps away from? Fowler, who just got you a, a strip fumble that you took for a touchdown or Sam who you need to take that year two leap I, I just don't see it happening from a Cowboy standpoint and then from a Randy Gregory standpoint I think Bill Belichick is probably on his phone already I mean Belichick just lost Matthew Judon he lost Christian Gonzalez and then had to give up a couple picks to go back and get JC Jackson mm-hmm. which probably put them out of the trade market for a pass rusher after losing Judon but then the timing goes you have a veteran pass rusher who can still be effective on the edge come into free agency I think this has Bill Belichick written all over it, which would also give Gregory a chance to kind of rebuild himself for a better contract in 2024. Two years ago, they were willing to pay him. Yeah. You know, and they thought enough of him. And I actually, they thought they had the deal done. You know, you have a uh, Denver based agent. And so, you know, it makes sense to try and 
maybe build some more clientele there with the Broncos, which is always good. That way the guy can kind of look after Randy while he's there in Denver. Uh, always been a huge fan of Randy Gregory. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the injury part of his career has been difficult. Uh, the mental struggles that he's dealt with, I think he's come through brilliantly. Yes. Uh, I would absolutely bring him back. And I really don't have time for people's feelings right now when it comes to playing time. Uh, I, I'm, I I'm, I'm kind of in that <laughs> mode where, uh, to me, it's about trying to find the best, best players to put on the field and rush the passer or play run defense. Run defense, not always one of Randy's strength, but I know with Randy you could put him wide. He's fine. You could kick guys inside of him. He's a really good combination player when you work games with him. Uh, when you start to talk about the one thing we'll get into with the 49ers is – they create a lot of four-man pressure. You bring Randy Gregory in here, I think you create four-man pressure. Haven't been completely sold on what I've seen from Dorrance Armstrong. I know Dorrance Armstrong has a, is in the last year trying to get a deal and all that you know, uh, going forward. But to me, I, I have no problems with trying to add guys that I know legitimately can rush the passer, and I know this guy can do that. Um, I agree with everything you both said about the talent. But I would say no, thank you. Uh, I do take feelings into consideration. <laughs> I am a very stubborn person, and I will admit that. But <laughs> after everything we did, we, <laughs> the organization did, uh, and then I know there was a whole confusion in whether was it the, the agent or not and what... It, there was a lot going on, and at the end, the deal didn't work out. But even then, the comments that were made on social media, I don't forget about that. I mean, after they've supported him for so long, and then he comes out with, I forget exactly word by word what he had tweeted at the time. Um, I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I, I, that's like a slap in the face to me. And no, I don't care if I'm if I have zero pressure right now towards, the, like, pressuring the, uh, the quarterback and I'm here struggling and losing every game, I don't care. I'm good. I will then find somebody else. Then you get fired. Yeah, for not I, having, I, I, then I, you get fired for not having players. See, this is where... And I get that, but... This is where you have to disconnect yourself from the situation. Fact. You have to sit there and look at it and go, okay, what is the one thing that Randy Gregory could help us do? And, again, two years ago, you were committed to doing that. Dan Quinn probably signed off on it. Dan Quinn's like, yeah, heck yeah, I can use this guy. So, to me, I, I, I'm not in the business of getting fired. You know, I'm in the business of trying to find players so my defense can match up with the teams I'm playing on my schedule. You know, the Philadelphias, the Detroits, the Chargers coming up. I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't win enough games. I get fired. Nobody's going to feel sorry for me when I get fired. Yeah. You know. But you also have to look. I think the one thing that always came down with Randy Gregory was his talent was always uh, so innate. He had that innate talent. Yeah. And we always talked about what he could be. And it always came down to how available he was because he that, kept getting suspended yeah. and all of that. And, and again, I don't, I don't, I take mental health super, super serious a hundred percent. So I'm not trying to downplay that, but when you talk about availability and can you count on something like that, on someone like that, is that someone that will fit in now with the culture that's currently being created in the locker yeah, room? If you, if you told me that you, are against this move because of availability, I really don't have a leg to stand on because that has been a history. Yeah. But I do know that when he is available, that he could be a difference maker as a player. Yeah. You know, there's mm -hmm. a reason why. And, you know, there, Denver gave him five years, $70 million, second year in a deal. Now, what's happened is Denver's in a situation right now with a brand new head coach, brand new staff. There's, that, that guy over there is setting examples, is what he's doing. He's saying, okay, how can I, you know, I'm going to get somebody's attention in this locker room today. Mm -hmm. And that's how you do things like that. But like I said, if you told me, if you told me, hey, I don't want the player because he's not always available, you have a point. And when, I, it, and when it comes to like Randy Gregory and just mental health in, in 
you know, specifically, everyone knows how I feel about mental health and, and knowing both sides of the coin as far as the availability part of it, the non-injury availability issues, which are the NFL suspensions around marijuana. And mm-hmm. my feelings on all of that are relevant, so I'm not going to get into all that. He's what proven I, to be right, right, by the way, right. what he thought about Correct. three, four years ago. And then ago. here we are, new CBA, new testing rules that don't apply as far as, uh, you know, suspension for marijuana in a certain, in a much, much of a degree. But I will say this. My main thing is for that thing, when that thing fell apart between both sides, there's Brandy Gregory and his agent side mm-hmm. of the story, mm-hmm. and they're the cowboy side of the story. Mm-hmm. And there's dirty laundry on both sides. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to air either of the dirty laundry because I know both sides. What I will say, though, is knowing both sides, I give grace to both situ- both sides of that coin to say, hey, it's possible to mend those fences. It's, it's ugly, but it's possible. That being said, to answer Derek's question, I'm not going to put any of that into play as far as my thought process of potentially or not potentially bringing Randy Gregory back. I'm looking at it strictly as from a Cowboy schematics, I don't know that he would be the DE5 that you would want in the building if if your plan is to develop Sam Williams and to keep Dante Fowler out there as well. I don't see that fit because you probably are going to have to pay him probably more than you would typically pay a, pay a DE5 to get that done. Now you flip over to the player side of it because free agency is a two-way street. From a player side of it, Randy Gregory's agent is looking at him and saying, there are, there's better situations out there. New England is a better situation. You'll probably get paid a little bit more. You'll likely be a starter in the absence of Judon, and you get a chance to kind of rebuild yourself to maybe get back into the pool in 2024. So feelings aside, hurt feelings aside and burnt bridges aside, take all of that thought out the window. And if we're strictly talking football, from both sides, I don't see it. And let's also be clear. The one thing I know about Jerry Jones is, he is not one to hold grudges. He right. is, not he is about, when it comes down to it, like it's business, and I think he looks at it as business. It's it's the reason why you can have a, a Ezekiel come back last week and them, and get, you know, get yeah, they put it on video board and say, man, he he is one of us, right? And, and the Cowboys had to cut him. Cowboys cut Emmitt Smith. Like I was there, just going to there say are Emmett. there are lots of situations I've Marcus seen this different scenarios. No, 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 no. I, those I have those seen, were different no, scenarios. No, no, no. I've seen this they organization. Wear. I've seen this situation a number of times where you could say the Cowboys were in a situation where they were spurned by a player, or the player had something to say walking out of the door after the Cowboys cut him, and and then you see when that guy's retired, he's back here and he's in the building and, and so he's got on the gray kisses. jacket, and the Cowboys are like, he's one of ours. I just don't think Jerry takes it personal like that. So I don't think Jerry would look at it like that. That's my own personal opinion. I don't think he would look, like, look at it like that. But I do think your point about availability is the most important that's, point. Of that's this. the point. You look at. I'll give you that one. I think at least in part. <laughs> He is not. He he will be. If these reports are accurate, that he's going to be released, then I think in part that's because over two seasons he's now played ten games. He missed, I think, what it was eleven games last season. Yeah. Um, And and on top of that, in the games that he's played in those ten games, he only has three sacks and twenty one tackles. When you're paying a guy five year deal worth seventy million dollars, sure, your expectations are you're going to get a little bit more in your pass rush. Do you remember? How uh, what has been the longest that he's played in one season? Yeah, we can find out. Really. Yeah, I assume somebody can pull that up real quick. Yeah, sure. Can. But but again, I think you can. I don't think anyone is going to argue availability has been his biggest no, that's downfall that's throughout been, his career. That's, and yeah, so that's for me, the that's the yeah. when I look at the depth of this defense of the defensive end position in particular, I'm like, hey, I, I know you may say. Dorrance Armstrong may not be showing me all I want. Mm-hmm. What I look at is I'm like, he he can make a few plays here and there. He's not going to be a, a yeah. world beater. But the, what I do love about him is he shows up every week. He's available. He's yeah. available. He's consistently available. And I don't know that there are guys on that list that I would think I would want to take time from for a guy that I don't no, consider that, to be that's as That's where I am. To answer your question, 11 starts in uh, 2021. Oh. That's the. Well, also, I think we've seen when people don't fit in <laughs> – what were you gonna say? I'm la- I'm laughing because just real quick. Mm-hmm. What about Tyron Smith and Tyler Smith? Well, we can have that conversation. I, now I don't think Tyler is the same conversation. I think Tyron is a conversation that we've already had and we've talked about. Like, how do you manage when you're going into a season? You have to be thinking about. I think they need to be thinking about. You're not going to have him for a full season. Right. Yeah. And if they've made the decision that Fair. his talent is yeah. good enough for them to deal with that, that's one thing. But I also will say this. Are you trying to make the equi- are you trying to make the equivalent between the ability of Tyron Smith when he's healthy I'm and the ability avail- of no yeah. no but, but what I'm see, saying is I'm saying. You- to me to me Tyler Smith as a tackle is the future 
That's the future to me. And they chose to go with uh, non-availability at times at tackle instead of putting the guy out there who's the future of your of your your team. But is that about the fact that they consider the talent they would consider in this instance? Let's say we're con- com- comparing these two things. They consider the talent of Tyron Smith at that position with what else they've got better and more important and worth the risk than defensive end where they've got lots of different options sure. and it's the same level of unavailability. I think there are more factors that are involved in that than just availability versus unavailability, yeah. right? I mean, that's, I mean, I forgot what I was no, saying. No, I mean, that, <laughs> that's that's completely factual. Um, I mean, because contextually speaking, you're both right, but you have to apply the extra variables. Like you said, they're – thinner on offensive line than they are on defensive front. And then this is a league where you're seeing the offensive line play kind of take a, a large hit because not, you talked about it a few weeks ago. It's the quality of the offensive oh, linemen yeah, that are coming question. into the league. Yeah. So the yeah. pipeline isn't there. So it gives you a little bit it gives you an option to give more grace to a guy like Tyron Smith than right. maybe you would have given to Randy Gregory. But again, this is all if we're talking about feelings, we got to get feelings off the table. Availability, absolutely a great point. Scheme fit or lack thereof, absolutely a great point. Let's not make let's not mince words there. We know DQ can get the most out of oh, Randy yeah, Gregory. Absolutely. That's the part yeah, I, I do absolutely. agree with you. Like that's the part what makes you a little bit like no, there, there, maybe they there can get some good out of him. There you was know? a willingness. There was a willingness at the time to give Randy Gregory probably seventy million dollars. Yeah. Maybe not the yeah, way that, that, that maybe not the way the Broncos were willing to do it. But but Jerry Jones. I mean Jerry Jones to the to you know it, has gone out of his way to always try and help Randy Gregory. Yeah. Even in, in you know he he to me there's that I, you're absolutely right. I don't think he'll ever have a bad thing to say about Randy Gregory. I don't think. Well, I, I think, think the agent is a whole so other thing there. To it, I think yeah. that's why Jerry backed him up so long because you do get to know Randy. Right. And he's such a great guy. Yes, like you, you know, there's nothing like. He's not a bad person. Is what I'm trying to say. So it's it, it very smart. So it's one of those things that yes, you want to support not as a player, just as a player, but also as a person and be there. And I think that's why he stayed here for so long, where so many critics and I think me at some point and a lot of people at some point before you really got to know the full situation mm-hmm. behind every suspension type of stuff, um, they they allowed him to try to get better and gave him all the support he want he he needed mm-hmm. as I, and the talent has always been there mm-hmm. but again can he be available and then i just remember the other thing that i was going to say is he and i don't know the answer to this but would he be a good fit like i mentioned before in the locker room because we've seen it with other guys that just they don't fit in not on the field but with everybody else on the team and that kind of creates we saw it with taco i know that was a little difference because i know that's very (laughs) different very different mucho i get i get i'm talking about (laughs) yeah you know clicking but i will say this i have never heard anything gregory would i've never heard anything that suggested to me that he was ever not good with the locker room when he he dropped right in i think i think the players were good with him i think he was good with the players by and large so i don't i wouldn't necessarily worry about that one too much i think he was a a a guy that they respected and and he respected them so i I think it all worked here from the standpoint i'm just not i'm not putting too much uh i'm not investing much of anything into the hurt feelings thing things because we're not going to sit here and pretend that uh we've not said some things during a breakup and only to end up back with that person a few months later. Uh-huh. Like we've we've I all mean, you've never you've never circled back uh-huh. not once. No, uh-huh. I respect that. Done, right done, here, fist bump. I respect once it's done, it's done. I, I honestly can't <laughs> say the same. Done, so let me speak for me. I mean, there are times where you say things during a toxic breakup because you thought it was going to go this way and it didn't go that way, and then you both are kind of yelling at each other, and then you hate each other for you know whatever, whatever, and then time passes. And those feelings, less, those feelings lessen, and you start to kind of remember the good times a little bit, and then you start you to wonder. You, know, right you now, start right? to kind of wonder, you know. But nonetheless, they look on Brian's face. yeah, yeah, yeah. But nonetheless, I'll say feelings aside, because I think feelings can be repaired, yeah. especially when you start sprinkling money on the feelings. Um, but feelings aside, <laughs> if you look at it from a football fit. Um, from a Cowboys standpoint, I don't think that they will want to pay what they need to pay Randy Gregory to be what is likely a DE5 because in losing him, they got Sam Williams. So that's who they want 
you know, to replace Randy Gregory with. And then from a player standpoint, like I said, there are better options. Bill Belichick and the Patriots, they, they're in dire straits right now. Yeah. This is a, a move that maybe the, the Chiefs will probably look at, something like that. Uh, Andy Reid is not adverse to adding pass rushers, and they need some depth on their defensive yeah. line behind Chris Jones. So, I mean, I just don't see it. There are probably lots of teams where he'll get a better opportunity Absolutely. to play uh, as a defensive yeah. But he has already been paid. That's true. Yeah, he's getting that that's money, true. So that's, so which he, also he, makes it easier on the next team. He needs to go where the fit is, where he feels the most comfortable. And I, I and will get the most reps. I wouldn't be doubted if it's in the backyard. But we're right here. <laughs> All right. Are you saying down uh, down to South Texas? No, I'm saying right here. Right here. Right in oh, this right backyard here. here. All right, we will see. Uh, that will be interesting to keep an eye on here over the next few days because I assume something should happen relatively quickly. We'll see. Yep. Uh, let's take our first break. Let's come back and – We'll start getting into the storylines of the week. We'll let Brian give us his breakdown of the Cowboys offense versus the 49ers defense. We'll be back. DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks, girl. Better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you back to the break i'm too romantic q barbecue fest that's what we're talking Let's about go. right now join us at miller lighthouse at at&t stadium on october 7th and 8th for world-class barbecue from pitmasters across the country while enjoying live entertainment and live Libations, libations, libations. Got to be liquor. Pour up liquor. Yeah, at the. Uh, <laughs> I always say that word wrong. It looks funny in my head. But anyway, at the Q Barbecue Fest in Dallas this October. Uh, yeah, the only thing hotter than the Dallas Cowboys will be the thirty thousand pounds of brisket, chicken, pulled pork, and ribs smoking at Miller Lighthouse when some of the biggest names in barbecue come together at the Q Barbecue Fest. Tickets are on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticking, ticketing provider of the da- of AT and T Stadium. Welcome back. It is the second segment of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. The segment brought to you by Blockchain.com. All right, here we go. Brian, give us your breakdown. Dallas offense versus 49ers defense. Yeah, this is a true 4-3 front. You've seen one to play like this already this year with the uh, the New York Jets. They're going to play what they call, we call the wide nine, where those uh, defensive ends are going to be really uh, – lined up wide outside of the tackles, the stream, extreme outside shoulder of the offensive tackles as you look at it. Uh, they're outstanding when it comes to getting pressure on the quarterback without using the blitz. They're going to they're gonna rush four. They don't have to blitz. Uh, they will just it, – it's it's really impressive the way that they play. They, they've got uh, – the thing about it is they tend to play a little bit more with their front – uh, and when I get into the defensive linemen, where guys play a little bit stationary, they don't really move back and forth. 
one plays on the left, one plays on the right. And that's kind of how they work. So it's it's a it's a really unique way of playing it because you see guys flipping all the time, but but not this crew. They're going to play a lot more. Um, they're going to play a lot more zone coverage in the secondary than they are man. Uh, they're going to be in nickel uh, about 85% of the time. You're going to get uh, – I went back and looked at the uh, the divisional game last year against Dallas and the way that they played Dak. They played cover three, which is that zone look, the cover two, which is the too high safety look, the cover four, and then cover one in those snaps. So, you know, Dak took advantage of them. When they went single high or the cover three, he, he did a really nice job a- against them that way. When they played the two safeties, the cover two look – uh, that was a little bit more of a problem for him. So we'll see if, in fact, that the 49ers give him a little bit more of cover two stuff. But they're they're really a uh, a cover three zone kind of a team when you look at them. Their defensive line, this is one of the best defensive lines that the Cowboys probably will face this year. They're physical, they're disruptive, they're difficult to move. Nick Bosa is primarily the, the guy you're going to have to deal with. Uh, he's going to line up on the left as the left defensive end. So that means this will be a Terrence Steele game. Last year, Terrence Steele wasn't in this game, the playoff game. That was Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith didn't fare too well against Nick Bosa in that game. That was a problem for him. Uh, so we'll see how things if the how things work out this time around. The biggest problem dealing with Bosa is the movement that he plays with. Like he is going to, he's not just going to rush up the field. He's a he kind of just tries to break you down by suddenly just moving back and forth, kind of finding spot, and then you're not sure how to get your hands on him. And that's the way he kind of breaks you down by by that movement. He shakes, he wiggles, and then he just doesn't want the blockers to get his hands on him. You have to be really patient when you block him. Don't let him get you with all that movement. You got to kind of set, you know, let him move all that stuff. He's not getting to the quarterback. Just let him move, let him move, let him move, and then kind of find a way to get your hands on him. So uh, he'll also lower his head and bull rush a blocker if he feels the blocker's given too much ground. He'll just carry you right to the quarterback. This is where Terrence still needs to be careful because Terrence Steele at times doesn't always set his feet. And when guys get under him, he gets compressed. And so that's if Bosa feels like that he can run Steele back into the quarterback, he will, he will do that. He's really good on – on running plays where he'll gamble. He'll gamble on just shooting the gap and just going down. And sometimes we've seen uh, Demarcus Lawrence do this, where all of a sudden they're lined up and they're like, they're feeling like the run play is going to go to their side or go away, and they just shoot the gap. And that turns into a problem because once he gets going, he could be a hard guy uh, to, to stop. Uh, inside at tackle, uh, Armstead and Hargrave, they're, they're the, the problems that I – I talked about they're going to line up you can Armstead's going to line up on the left tackle at left tackle and Hargrave is going to line up on the right side 85 percent of the snaps these guys just kind of play those spots and but Armstead is long powerful he's a handful to deal with against the run Hargrave is the pass rusher he's the top tackle in the league when it comes to quarterback pressures Uh, if you get these guys what we would call adjacent or right next to each other, you're going to get some type of game. So, you know, with how wide they play, and all of a sudden they get real tight and they get together, well, they're going to do some game. You're probably going to get a twist. You're going to get maybe a linebacker involved. So the Cowboys, just by alignment, need to be aware of where these guys play. Tight alignment, probably a game. You know, far alignment, probably a little bit of a normal uh, pass rush. Drake Jackson is a, another one. He He's a guy that plays edge opposite of Bosa. He's got three sacks, nine quarterback hits. He's exceptionally quick off the ball. He's got the ability to use that quickness in order to break down blockers. So they've got a front that's pretty pretty potent to deal with with the two big inside guys, three guys that can really get after the passer. When you look at their linebackers, Fred Warner and Drake Greenlaw that are outstanding. Mm. When it comes to playing the run, Maybe best in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they are really good. They, you know, the sixty run snaps that they faced this year, the two they they've got sixteen tackles, so they're not going to miss when they get in position. They're a difficult group to run away from due to their awareness, uh, their anticipation, and their athletic ability. They they both diagnose well. They play downhill in a hurry. What you hope for is you take advantage of their aggressiveness. You know, we have this problem here with the Cowboys at times. Can you get them to run past the play? Can you get them to overcommit in the run game? That's really your best hope because getting guys up on them can be really, really difficult. Uh, 
that there's there's been some success when you throw the ball though against this guy. I mean, I'm, and I'm, I mean, Fred Warner is the one particularly. Uh, if you look at the number of targets and receptions that have come to dealing with him, he's he's one of those guys though that he might let you catch the ball, but he's not going to give you any run after catch. But there are times where people have caught the ball. But he's quick to bring you on the onto the ground. So, middle of the field though is his area where he generally operates, and so that's where you got to kind of worry about if you know where where those guys are on the field. Uh, you know, you got to worry about these guys jumping routes too. They like to if they see like the ball, maybe quarterback sets looks back. Next thing you know, they the quarterback's got his eyes on the underneath, and they just immediately just drive on it. They they play with really really great awareness when it comes to this. So they're going to be difficult to deal with in that way. The secondary, I mentioned, uh, they're going to play nickel eighty five percent of the time. The, the, I think this unit really benefits from their front seven, because again, it's another one of those stationary groups. Uh, Tra- uh, Traverius Ward, he's going to line up at the left cornerback 98% of the time. So if he lines up at left corner, that's going to be your right side of the defense. And then Lenore is the other corner on the other side. He's going to play uh, that spot 78% of the times. So Isaiah Oliver is their nickel. He's uh, always in the slot. when they In the first two games, they had a guy, Ambre Thomas, was in the lineup, but they've gone with this current group of Ward, Lenore, and Oliver the, the last several weeks, and and Thomas has played a far less. Um, I think if you throw the ball at one of these guys, I throw it at Lenore is who I would throw it. Ceedee Lamb had a huge play against him last year on a bit of a just a just a go just a go route, a vertical nine route, and Dak they maxed the protection, got the ball down the field. Ceedee made the catch. He also drew a pass interference call. I don't think Lenore runs as well as some of these corners that we've seen the Cowboys play. I think he's a better zone player than he is a man. The catch-up speed there, I just don't see. When there's separation, it's a little bit of a struggle for him to get back. So taking a shot at him, I don't think is a bad option. The numbers, the metrics, all those things kind of point to that direction too. Teams have had success throwing the ball in front of him, and they've, and they've had some success throwing the ball behind him a little bit. So, you know, that's something that the Cowboys kind of need to keep uh, keep an eye. The safeties are really good players. Uh, Tashawn Gibson and then Hufunga are two really solid players. They, they, uh, Hufunga is always around the line of scrimmage. He's like cursed the way he plays. Uh, he's going to line up in the box. He's like a linebacker. He's kind of a headhunter when it comes to the way he plays. If you're one of these guys, you're running crossing routes, the uh, stuff underneath – if he's in that area, he is going to take a shot at you. He's going to try and knock that ball loose. Uh, and, and he does a, a really good job of that. Gibson plays more coverage. I think Gibson does a really good job of reading routes. He puts himself in position in the middle of the field. you got Warner and Gibson in the middle. That's why teams have struggled a little bit to throw the ball inside there because of those two guys and the way they play. But there's there's – uh, there's, they do a great job of keeping the ball in front of them and then rallying. Both safeties tackle really, really well. So it's a hard team to move the ball on, but in a way, the the running aspect of it, I think, is going to be some of a problem. But if you're going to attack a guy, Lenore, the corner, I think would be the guy. If they want to throw the football, that's the guy that I would go after. All right, we're going to take our final break. When we come back, we got some questions and some different topics we're going to hit with regards to this matchup, Cowboys offense versus 49ers defense. We'll be back, DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change. A proud partner of the Cowboys is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're 
faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites in a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back to the break. Make a crucial catch this year and join the boys in the fight against cancer with the 2023 Crucial Catch Collection. Head to the Pro Shop near you or log on to the Pro Shop dot com dallas cowboys dot com and help save a life today find your local screening center visit crucial catch dot dot cancer dot org welcome back final segment of the break live from the swbc mortgage studios at the star right before we went to break uh brian broke down the cowboys offense versus the niners defense uh no see in the break you had something you wanted to throw out yeah, there absolutely just regarding some, lenore right yeah just some science to help support what brian's uh, excellent scouting report was saying about lenore he is absolutely the weak spot he's the one that you want to poke with a sharp stick his his hawk rate uh per our good friends at next gen stats i mean, love them yeah uh is roughly just three percent that's one of the lowest one of the worst in the league so he doesn't hawk the ball very well coverage success rate is just around 45 percent. so less than half the time when you target him he's having success those are two of the lowest uh marks of any defensive back in san francisco but contrarily when you look at hufanga hufanga uh, hawks the ball at a rate of about 33 mm-hmm. percent. so that's hey keep an eye on that but also he has the highest coverage success rate on the entire team which is roughly 67 percent so it's wildly lopsided like Brian said so if you're not Mike McCarthy Brian Schottenheimer Dak Prescott as long as your front five holds up you need to target Lenore early often and for the entirety of the game that's a huge if when you say if your front five protection do your job. holds do, do your up job. because this is a tough defense I, I wanted to go back and and I was looking at this top the the, the defensive front um, their pressure rate is about 43 percent they get pressure yeah. Almost half the time when they're when they're going to get the quarterback, they don't blitz much though. Obviously, you said Brian only about yeah, a quarter they don't of the have time. Yeah. But what was interesting to me was Javon Hargrave is actually the person that leads the team in quarterback yeah. pressures with yeah. 22. Uh, he also has three sacks, uh, tied with tied with Drake Jackson for the lead on the team. Talk to me about how the interior of this offensive line matches up with those two defensive tackles, particularly because it mostly gets a lot of the a yeah. lot of the the press. Right. Hargrave's a problem. Yeah, the, the thing about it is with Hargrave, and, and the Cowboys are familiar with Hargrave's game from Philadelphia yep, a little yep, bit, yep, you know, yep. and you know, San Francisco goes out, they realize, well, heck, we need to maybe shore some things up, you know, with help Armstead inside, and they and they really have. And the, the thing that, that, that Armstead is so long and strong that he's it, he doesn't have the explosiveness. So, you know, if the matchup, the left and right matchup and the way they play is going to be critical in this game. And, and the Cowboys, I feel like, are, are really equipped to handle this. Because Smith last year, well, in the playoff game, he played tackle. So here you have Martin, a little bit compromised with the thigh mm-hmm. or you know, the quad or what he's dealing with, maybe a little bit of an ankle. But you do have two power players inside. The, yeah. it, when, you, when I went back and watched that game, it wasn't a very good game for for Biotish. It, that that it was a struggle for him in this football game, and and yeah, because the way these linebackers play, but these defensive tackles it, and Hargrave is just such an up the field player. So you have got to stop him at the point. You've got you can't let him get going, and the Cowboys are equipped to be able to do that. As last year, like say Connor McGovern, yeah. Not not probably the best situation there. I mean, they moved on from him. He was a starter in this game. Mm-hmm. wasn't terrible, but he wasn't. You know, it's not Smith, and then also uh, Martin. So Dallas is better equipped 
to handle. This will be a this will be a difficult matchup for San Francisco with really good on good inside. They haven't played anybody that's as good as Dallas is on the inside that way. The Rams also uh, regularly, what I saw when I went back and watched the, yeah. the game against the Rams, they would regularly keep six blockers in yeah. uh, to be able to handle this. I was actually thinking, like, this would be a game where I would love to see them play a little bit more 12 personnel uh, yeah. and try to Just max protect this help, thing yeah. uh, to where you can now really try to get those receivers out in routes where, where maybe you can get them freed up to where they are you know, matched up one-on-one with these corners and yeah. try to make some plays there. I feel that's where they, that's where they really – they have to they have to be almost predetermined where they're going to go with the ball like with the intent of mm-hmm. make the, make the 49ers have to commit resources to going over and helping you know Dallas needs to find ways to win on the outside both these corners will give up some plays it just so happens that Lenore gives up more yeah but i they they benefit so much from that front i mean do you okay it's great to say oh we'll attack the secondary here Oh yeah, by the way, you got to block this front. <laughs> right. You know, and it and it and sometimes you look at it, but the Rams did a good job of getting the ball yeah. out. I mean, it was like, you know, Matthew Stafford was not interested in holding that ball at all. It was get it out, get it out, get it out. And I I have a feeling that the Cowboys are going to have to if they're going to play if they'll play zone coverage against Dak and they'll play off like what New England did. You know, run these guys off, throw them the ball, and, and go for it. I mean, if there ever was a week when you want to see this Texas Coast offense that's predicated on getting the ball out yeah. quick, this is the week to do this it. Absolutely. Like, this is yeah. the week when it should actually help you, right? Yeah. I think they're going to have to be able to run the ball a little bit too. I, I you know, this I would think, oh well, this could this be one of those game plans where you, like Tampa was a couple of years ago, where Dak, where they played in Tampa, not the playoff game, but the one that started the season, mm-hmm. and they just completely committed to throwing the football. You know, that's. I don't know. Could that be, like you said, could you just max this thing up and say, you know what, our best shot at winning this game will be throwing the football if we can just block this front. If yeah. you had to summarize and... They're a pain say, in the ass to deal with. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, but Great illustrate analysis. the biggest yeah. difference between what they what they look like now versus the last time, last year, when or earlier this they, year. They, the they rattled. They rattled. I, I mean, and they... They, they took advantage of your offensive line in some spots. I, I mentioned Tyron Smith was not good enough at right tackle. He just wasn't. That back, that matchup with him and Bosa, Bosa had him on his heels in that game. Usually Tyron Smith, his base is good, his balance is good, body control is good. He was, he was caught. He was caught a little bit. I, I mentioned the center wasn't very good. McGovern wasn't great. You know, uh, Tyler Smith was fine at the at the other tackle spot, but they were really lacking. You know, the 49ers said, "Okay, you're just not good enough at these spots," and they they went after that. They and they they did a really good job of when you know when the receivers. You talk about teams when when they when they're able to make plays, they tackled really well. That's the thing about this defense is it's like. The ball's there, and then there's – oh, it looks like a big game. Like, Zeke had a run where it looked like it was going to be out the gate, and it's like a six, seven-yard run that looked like it could have gone for 36 yards. But, the you know, here's the – you know, Warner jumps over, boom, tackle right there, gain of six. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, wow, that, that was that could have been a huge play right there. He had a big day that yeah, day. Yeah, that's, really that's well. where that's – the that's when you have to deal with a team. You have, to, you have to take what you can get, but be ready for – you're probably going to be tackled at the spot, and but if you could break a, a tackle or two and make a big play, that's what they were able to do against the Patriots. I felt like they broke some tackles in the secondary and able to, you know, Ferguson and Lamb and those guys able to break some tackles and make some bigger gains because of that. But I don't know. We'll see if the, how uh, if they can get away from this crew. I just feel like this is, and I, I've been saying it all week to anybody who listen. I just feel like this is the Brandon Cooks game. I keep saying I feel like this is the Brandon Cooks game. And, you know, part of it goes to, you know, this is a Stockton native. This is his area. He's back in his old stomping grounds. He's most comfortable here and playing football here um, out in the Santa Clara area. But at the same time, like we've been talking about, we've been waiting to see what that package looks like with Cooks. And we've not seen it in week one because it didn't have to get unveiled. He missed week two. Week three, three offensive linemen out. Mike McCarthy says he overreacts. He takes some of the vertical package out. Against the Jets, didn't quite need it, but he started to get a little more 
more active. This is it. This is the game that you have to – you're probably going to have to go deep into your offensive mm-hmm. playbook. You're going to have to stretch the field to keep those pass, rush, pass rushers honest. And then when you look at the matchups like Brian was talking about, yeah, Hufanga is going to be a problem, but you would love to believe that CeeDee Lamb can, can take advantage of that, which means Cooks is against Lenore. If Cooks is against Lenore or whomever is against Lenore, but yeah. schematically it'll probably be Cooks for most of the time, get him the ball in space, let him be effective. Get him the ball on vertical routes against a guy who doesn't have a good success rate, has one of the worst hawking rates in the in the NFL, take advantage of that. So I think this is a Brandon Cooks game. One of the things I saw on, on film with against the Rams, the Rams had a lot of success on deep crossing routes. So yeah. if you're trying to stretch yeah. the field, it doesn't need, need to necessarily even be vertical routes. Deep middle? You can do a lot. You can do a Not even the middle. Like <laughs> no, just, just feel like send the guy. Yeah. Across the right, so the guy across no, the field. Middle is not good for them. Exactly, it's not. No, good. Just, but you can do like some. You can do, up. and yeah. they they actually lost some receivers a couple times yeah. in zone coverage uh, when they were sending them across yeah. the field. So I would love to see the Cowboys use some of that and use Brandon Cooks in that way. Absolutely. He has the speed to where he can get open. He can make some plays, especially if they're going to try to play him in zone. So um, I'd love to see some of that, and yes, I think sir. this could be a game where they yes, could use sir. the skills of Brandon Cooks. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We're back tomorrow. We'll talk about the Cowboys' defense. Versus this Niners offense. You thought it was complicated to, to fans <laughs> manage that defense. We'll talk about that offense tomorrow. We'll be back. Dallas, until then, for Brian Broaddus, Patrick Walker, Amber Garcia, I am Derek Eagleton. This has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!